Hey guys, welcome back. This is Val from Dreamlight. In today's video, I'm going to show you a really cool set you can create on your own. We're just going to feature a floor and a kind of back wall. I'm going to use it to catch some fancy shadows with our female character, which is today going to be R.Y. Leganor. Uh, character plus the clothing and hair bundles. I'm going to be using this exact uh, bundle here for our photo shoot. So I'm going to start off by creating a primitive. I'm going to use plane and I'm going to use size 20. This is going to be our floor. I'm going to switch over to texture shaded so it's a little bit quicker preview. And then I'm going to add another primitive, same size, and I'm going to Click on the first one, rename it to ground, click on the second one, rename to wall. And now we want to also rotate that one so it stands up 90 degrees, right? And we can of course fine tune and position it so it is uh, where we want it to be. Thing is our character is gonna end up at zero zero zero, so we can just put the wall here somewhere so it's easy to use. All right, let's find our character. And here in Genesis 9 characters, we've got the one I just showed you, which is RY Leonor HD. Let's load her. So I just switch over to wireframe here to not show any nudity in my video. God forbid, right? I mean, that's really damaging seeing nude people, right? So what I'm gonna do, uh, of course I'm kidding. Uh, what I'm gonna do is, um, put on the clothing, right? And out of touch, and then we got this multi-style multi, multi -style gothic outfit. So I'm gonna make sure I have my character selected. You can zoom in a little bit here. Uh, go back, and uh, you have here all the um, items you can um, click on, right? So it has different parts. So you can use the left boot, right boot you can you know uh, adjust the pose if needed all right and we're gonna use the um, I kind of like the skirt right and the stockings look cool and then we're gonna get that one awesome now that we have no nudity we can switch over to NVIDIA our preview and right now we have no particular lighting added right it's just the default thing so I'm gonna use is the outdoor um, the kind of overall lighting solution the kind of global lighting solution right I'm gonna remove that map so that we get the sunshine to shine and I'm gonna use it for our photo shoot in a specific way this particular light has two uh, kind of functions right one is the Sun one is the sky and you can adjust both here dampen it a little bit right uh, at the same time you can also lower uh, here the Sun disk intensity all right so if you lower the Sun to zero you just have the sky which is the very soft lighting you see here um, then you can also decide I want the Sun to be a little bit more vague so you have a little bit more of that overall uh, presence on your character and less of the sharp sunshine today I want to use that sharp uh, sunshine but we're gonna maybe tweak it down a little bit to maybe 0 0.8 and find you later. Now we're also gonna do, just quick here, denoiser. If you have an RTX graphic card, turn that on, right? Now what I'm gonna do is rotate the sun. I'm gonna set a summer each date. Uh, then I'm gonna rotate it. And what I wanna do is uh, I want the, the wall to catch a nice shadow, all right? So for that to happen, I don't want the light to be too low on the ground, like 21, that's too low, right? But I want it to be kind of low so that we can see the shadow behind. Because if we put the sun like midday uh, and rotate it, we are getting this shadow here, but not on the wall. So it needs to be kind of low-ish, all right? I'm gonna take that. And now, I think it's a little bit too harsh still, so 0 point, let's just use 0 0.5 right now, okay? And I'm gonna just switch over to here, viewport, sorry, uh, here, <laughs> active viewport, so I have a little larger view. 
All right. So I have no camera as of yet, so let's add a camera. Cool. And what you want to do is when you play with lighting, you want to have the darker side towards the camera. Okay, so we don't want to have it look like this because then it looks kind of flat. You want the lighting to be kind of dark towards the camera, right? Now, I want to just put it a little bit closer. I'm going to add a pose in a second, but already we can see the shadow being behind, right? And we can adjust the wall slightly as well. By putting it a little bit closer, we can control how big the shadow is and where it is. All right, so in a second, we're going to adjust that um, as well. I'm going to maybe lower that to zero point. I, you know what? I think maybe going for one is good here because she receives more light, but now the wall is washed out. Of course, you can, you know, add texture to the wall, which we are not going to do today. But you can select these two using control, then head to surfaces, select them again, and now here on the base color, you can say, hey, I want it to be a little bit darker so that it projects or receives less lighting. Alright? So let's say maybe we can want something like that. Cool. Alright. Now we're gonna head back here and add a hair prop. We don't want our character to be bold. So we're going to go here and find a good um, out of touch. What do we have here? I just in this bundle, I've got this ponytail that's gothic. It looks amazing, right? So I'm going to select our character, go back here and just uh, one is conforming, one is movable. I'm going to do conforming. So it just conforms towards the body and that's that. Now, what I also want to do is probably add a different color. So there is material presets and we can click on the hair prop here. All right. And then choose base colors. All right. And base color mm, is the one we see as base. All right. Let's go for this one here pink right and then you can also add blend color colors to that on top and you can add blend masks different ways it blends and also recolor the hairband you can see up here let's use violet on that one cool ah let's use black there we go and we got also mixed colors and all that which are pre-made right this one is really cool and so forth. You got a gazillion options here as well. We can play with that later. So uh, let's add a pose, right? Real quick, a pose to our scene. And what we're gonna do is click on the everyday standing. Or do we have some kind of photo shoot style? Enigmatic elegance. We do. All right. By Zedicus, right? These are cool, kind of like a model-ish type. And the thing is, uh, what we want to do here is, oops, I added that post to that hair. Don't do that. Don't, don't do that at home, right? Don't, don't do that. That's not good. Here we go. So now we are having the feet going through the ground. So we're going to pull our character out of the ground here. Pull it up a little bit until the heels are touching the ground but not going through something like that cool so now you have a pretty model ish type of render really quickly done right uh, the wall is well kind of empty right but we have the shadow being uh, placed there now before I end I'm gonna show you a really cool thing which is off uh, camera shadows. So sometimes when you're you know, placing your stuff, you want additional shadows to be present on an object. For instance, a tree or some kind of other stuff you have that would just carve out a piece of the wall and place a shadow um, on, on each side, right? So in this case, I'm gonna keep it really simple. I'm gonna go to one of my own sets here environments are to texture dream light and so this set is called 
ancient dungeon kit and it features palm trees you can use off camera so what I'm gonna do is grab I'm gonna go to top view and wireframe in the auxiliary viewport if you don't have that you can always go to window panes and add it here auxiliary viewport and I'm gonna grab that uh, palm tree oops that was the wrong thing to move let me just redo that let's click on the palm tree again and now what we can do is move it all right and keep it out of the out of the um, so to speak out of the out of view out of camera but it's still here projecting a shadow now can be a little bit tricky to position these items so ideally they are best used with spotlights where you can really control the position of the light here we're using a sunlight it's a little bit more vague right but what, what I can do is move it down because it's, an, it's, it's in kind of like an off-camera item I can move it down and even scale it right and just use it to project extra light in my scene so eventually when I have it low enough it starts to add a shadow and frames my image so what this does it kind of dresses the white wall with the pattern rather than just being you know completely white so that may add some additional touch-ups to your image and also you will avoid having empty spaces because empty spaces can at times steal attention all right now a cool thing you can do we can copy this tree and I'm gonna copy that here ctrl C ctrl V right and move it also to the other side so just move it across the scenery until you reach the other end and that now also frames a little bit and adds some additional light on the other side that one we can maybe move up a little bit so it doesn't catch her face now another thing you can do which is really cool and a lot of people don't know is because these are off-camera items I can clone that yet again all right copy and paste and now what I'm gonna do is here look at that I'm gonna grab that wall sorry <laughs> the tree and put it upside down 180 what this does it enables me to use the bottom of the tree in a cool way so now I can go back to top and I can use that to create a lighting. Let me just put it so it's visible. There we go, right? Nice. And we can move it up now. And you can use the bottom of the tree to um, make it a little bit larger kind of pattern here. And again, it's very difficult to play with these patterns, um, you know, when you have uh, sunshine or sunlight, because you don't know really exactly where the sun is placed, right? So you're kind of guessing a little bit here, um, and you are kind of uh, guessing a little bit, and you don't know exactly where it goes, right? And here we have a tree getting into our view. So we're going to remove it. There we go and a lower sun here would you know increase the chances of us kind of hitting the wall right so if i lower the sun slightly maybe just 15 minutes or half an hour i will get more of those shadows projected on the wall right so that's pretty much it and that is how easily you can you know dress your scene and create off-camera shadows that as you can see contribute to your scene and make it more interesting now to avoid let me just rotate that to avoid getting how should i say 
to avoid getting the uh, shadow sharp, right? Um, you could basically play with the size of the sun, right? So you can go in here and place with the size of the sun, disk scale. If you increase that, you will get more blurrier shadows and vice versa you can lower that to get more sharp shadows right however one thing i recommend is to stick with the default and just add a camera depth of field on your camera which is here right depth of field and then here on the top view as you can see you can just frame our character with a line red line here right and then just lower this to get her in focus right gonna get her in focus you also use perspective view to see where she is here and exactly make sure that she receives full sharpness right but then the background kind of gets blurry around her just be careful with that because too much will blur everything all right, so finally, you know, if you want to just make a little bit more impact lighting wise, what you can do is increase the lighting intensity on the sun. So you go here in the sun and say, hey, I want more sun. Let's add more sun. That projects more sun onto her, but also the wall. And now we can control the wall, like we said, like I said before, right? I can do that individually of the floor. If the floor is okay, keep it. The wall can be separate, right? And I'm gonna go here and lower that so it doesn't overpower the scene. And usually the wall and floor will have will need different intensities because they will have different angle towards your um, scene, towards the sun. Guys, that's all for today. A little bit longer video than usual. I want just to do a quick kind of photo shoot thing uh, so you can see how you can create your own white backdrops and make them really cool looking. So guys, that's pretty much it for today. Thanks so much for watching. Check out the links below this video. Follow, like and all that. And I'll see you soon again.